wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Hey, we're coming here in our great podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for being here. Uh, we've got an amazing guest uh, that I think you're going to like. He's been on the show several times already. Tom Hartman will be on the show to talk to us about one of his amazing new books. He's got so many books. I think uh, we'll have to ask him for the count on them. But in the meantime, go see the video version of this at youtube.com forward slash Chris Voss. Hit the bell notification button. Go to goodreads.com for it says Chris Plus. See everything we're reading and reviewing over there. We actually read for a change. Also, go to all of our groups on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. Subscribe to the newsletter on LinkedIn. The thing's killing it over there and our big 132,000 LinkedIn group as well. So we're excited to announce my new book is coming out. It's called Beacons of Leadership, Inspiring Lessons of Success in Business and Innovation. It's going to be coming out on October 5th, 2021. And I'm really excited for you to get a chance to read this book. It's filled with a multitude of my insightful stories, lessons, my life, and experiences in leadership and character. I give you some of the secrets from my CEO entrepreneurial toolbox that I use to scale my business success, innovate, and build a multitude of companies. I've been a CEO for, uh, what is it, like uh, 33, 35 years now. We talk about leadership, the importance of leadership, how to become a great leader, and how anyone can become a great leader as well. Or order the book wherever fine books are sold. Today, once again, Tom Hartman is on the show. He is the author of the newest book that's uh, come out March 8th, 2022, The Hidden History of Big Brother in America, How the Death of Privacy and the Rise of Surveillance Threatens Us and Our Democracy. And he's going to be talking about this new book. He's got an amazing number of books. He is the nation's number one progressive talk show host for over a decade. His program is live from noon to 3 p.m. Eastern on commercial radio stations across the United States, on nonprofit stations via the Pacifica Network, and on channel 127 of Sirius XM Radio Network. Welcome to the show, Tom. How are you? Hey, Chris. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to see you again. Great to see you again. Congratulations on the new book. Give us your plug so people can find you on those interweb things. Yeah. Uh, so, Doc. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. HartmanReport.com or TomHartman.com. HartmanReport.com is a daily rant that I do. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's free and there's no ads. And uh, TomHartman.com is just our basic generic website for the show and all that kind of stuff. There you go. I love your, your radio show. I, well, the, the simulcast, I guess, on YouTube. So awesome sauce. I was catching over there. So what motivates you want to write this book? I think that this is this is an issue that kind of came to the fore during during the Trump administration when he and Ajit Pai blew up net neutrality. But outside of that, most Americans don't think too much about it. I mean, we talk about government, big brother. And after the Patriot Act was passed, there was about a year of conversation about it, and then it kind of died out. Uh, and of course, when Ed Snowden's revelations came out, we discovered that government Big Brother is actually is watching, you know, a lot more than we thought. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, very few people talk about corporate Big Brother, and those are the two kind of mm-hmm. categories of Big Brother that I deal with in the book, as well as the history of even the word privacy. Why does the word privacy not occur in the Constitution? So mm-hmm. that that's what I, I just wanted to take that stuff on. It. it mm-hmm. I think that if we are facing a a cultural crisis in America right now, I think an awful lot of it has to do with the business models that are being pursued by some of these large companies on the internet that, that are enemies of privacy, shall we say. So what are some of the ways that corporations are, we're familiar with kind of with the Edward Stone and stuff, but what are, what are some of the ways corporations are doing this? Well, they're gathering massive amounts of data about us. Our, the conduct of our daily lives has become something that can be turned into money. So, you know, you may get a smart thermostat in your house and you think, oh, yeah, it's a, the thermostat's controlling my house. <laughs> well, it won't work unless you hook it up to the company's server in some distant city and they're tracking when you get up, when you go to bed, what your temperatures are. Oh, look at big temperature variations. Maybe somebody's going through menopause or maybe somebody's doing cancer treatment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the granularity is absolutely shocking. You, you want to buy a smart 
smart bed, it won't give you information on how you're sleeping unless it goes through the server. You want a smart doorbell? They're wiring neighborhoods together, tying them into police departments, hooking facial recognition up to it, and they know when you're having parties and who's coming over to your house and when you came home and when you left. And, and this is just the kind of obvious stuff, right? Then it gets a whole hell of a lot more granular. There's a company that sells information to companies that are to retail, or to retail outfits that are answering the phone dealing with sales. For example, if you owned a company and you were advertising, we got the best product, best price on this widget, and we will match anybody else's price in your Acme widget. And you hook up with one of these companies. And when the phone rings, the phone number for the person calling you gives that company's data bank access to who they are immediately. They know who wow. they are. And they can then tell you in real time if in the previous hour, that person has searched the websites of your competitors. And wow. if you have, then you know that this is the person who's calling to get the best price and you put them on hold for an hour. Yeah. I mean, just, just as, I mean, at the moment, most of this stuff is just massively irritating, but they are gathering information about us that could be used against us in ways that are just absolutely breathtaking and are being used against people in authoritarian countries on a fairly routine basis. Wow. I never thought about, I mean, I've always noticed how if I search for something, you know, like if I search for your book, cause we're gonna have you on the show, I'll suddenly get Facebook ads and everything else. It's like I, so many people on Facebook will be like, man, I just search for one thing. And like, all of a sudden they notice it, even talking in your phone on Siri or, or Google voice. I don't know if Siri, I don't know if they block some of that with Siri and the latest rules from Apple, but you know, who knows anymore really? Because, you know, they tell you one thing and they do another. We Back in the late 1800s, we got the first law that says it's a crime to open people's mail. It was in the 1920s, I believe, or maybe the 19, early 1930s that we got Title II, the Telecommunications Act, that said that it's a crime to listen in on a phone call. So now we've got this ironic situation. And this, by the way, applied to the Internet up until 1990. I, I, excuse me. This applied to the Internet in most regards up until... Ajit Pai and Donald Trump blew it up when they ended net neutrality. So now if you're using your smartphone and you're talking to somebody on the phone and you're bouncing it off a cell tower, so it's within the infrastructure of the phone company, it takes a warrant for anybody to listen to what you're saying. Yeah. On the other hand, if you've turned on the use internet for my phone calls feature on your phone, which for some people, they think it makes it more convenient or whatever. It, mostly I thought. <laughs> it, more, it makes it cheaper for the phone company, right? Um, now, because Ajit Pai and Donald Trump blew up net neutrality, anybody can listen to your phone call. They don't need a warrant. The phone company can listen to it. Your internet service provider can listen to it or anybody who just figures out how to you know, hack the stream with no legal consequences. In fact, your internet service, we're the only developed country in the world where the internet service provider, the company that brings the internet into your home, which has the unique ability to know absolutely everything you do, every keystroke on your computer, every email you get, every email you send, every page you browse and record that information, all of it, everything that, that they not only can do that in the United States, but you know, they, they can sell that information to anybody they want. They can use it in wow. any way they want. That is crazy. And in fact, wasn't the FBI or somebody setting up fake cell phone towers that could pick up the pings? Yeah, those are called stingrays, and it's a it's another yeah. uh, innovation. And uh, there's a, a little riff about them in the book. I I learned about stingrays. It, stingrays are a, a classic man in the middle attack box, and on one end it's hooked up to an actual cell tower that thinks it's talking to a cell phone, and so it carries both data and phone calls. And on the other end, it's got an antenna that says, "I'm a cell tower." And so as your phone, as you're walking by, if you, your phone is constantly looking for the nearest tower to get the closest signal, and if you walk by one of these uh, stingrays, your phone will think, oh, it's T-Mobile. Thank you very much. And I'm connected. But you're actually connected to the stingray, which then has the ability to suck everything that's in your phone out. Wow. And what I learned about this was back six, eight years ago, I was living in D.C., and I walked past the White House every day on my way home from work. And every time I walked by the White House my phone would get hot. I'd lose like 20% of my battery in about four blocks. Holy crap. Out what the hell was going on? And then there was this news story about how, I think it was Israel was busted. It was a foreign country was busted for running stingrays around the White House. Yeah. And which causes you to think, and, and then we learned that there were more than 20 stingrays in DC and nobody knew who owned them all. And now we're finding out that police departments all over the United States are using stingrays. Private detectives are using stingrays. I mean, it's just gone nuts. 
-hmm. and they can just suck all your data out of your phone, get your passwords, get your contact, get your emails, get everything if they want. And mostly they're used for espionage, but it's something that should be regulated and by and large it's not. I hope someone's enjoying all those naked pictures I take for weight loss where it's the <laughs> before and after. I don't really do that, but. Well, that's the thing. I, you know, I was talking to a colleague of ours uh, the other day, uh, you know, we talked to him, and he was like, you know, you know what they're going to use against us if they ever decide they want to take us down is our porn watching habits. And, yeah. And, and, and we were talking about how Elliot Spitzer got taken <clears throat> down as governor of New York. That's true. And the thing, and for sleeping with a hooker, but the thing was, she, he, wear, he kept his black socks on while he was having sex. Everybody in America knew that, that little nuance. And so, you know, <laughs> they, you know, you know they'll find something kinky about a video that you watched, and that's what they'll show everybody, right? Yeah. And uh, I didn't know black socks was kinky. I'm going to have to knock that off, I guess. <laughs> well, this was, I mean, this was the 1990s, right? Yeah. Well, it was this text messages, too, that kind of, I mean, I don't know if they discovered the hard way, but the text well, messages. You know, you know who nailed it was Roger Stone. Yeah. Roger Stone broke federal law to spy on Elliot Spitzer and discovered that he was hooking up with this hooker and wow. then and, uh, fed that information to the, to the press and to the FBI. Never went to jail for it. I mean, he, he committed a major felony to, to take down Elliot Spitzer and brags about it. There's a documentary about it. Yeah. Called uh, wow. Plant Number Nine. If you and we it. can't still get that guy in jail after over December 6th. Oh. Hopefully he's on his way. I don't know. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. So, um, I mean, I talk to friends every now and then I have some friend on Facebook. They're like, yeah, I'm going to quit using social media because I don't want to be tracked or I'm really, I don't want to use that because I'm into privacy. And I'm like, you have a cell phone in your hand, honey. <laughs> like that thing's between apps and everything else. That thing is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And I think we all have to operate on the assumption that at least most of the time we're being surveilled. The question is, Ultimately, as a society, what are we going to do about this? Are we going to embrace privacy again or not? And I think, frankly, that without privacy, you can't have a functioning democracy. Yeah. And you can't have a, pro a functioning protest movement either. I remember when Mark Zuckerberg let out of the bag, I think it was 2004 or something, he made the comments that there's no privacy anymore or something. And like everyone just hit the, hit the, hit the, started screaming and yelling. And he was basically telling us what, what he already knew that we, the cat was already in the bag. Is there any way to put that back in the box or is it, or is it, do we have to just come up with privacy laws or? The Europeans have got a good start on this. The European Union, they have this system of laws that, that protect privacy that include the right to be forgotten, which is very cool. You can simply say that that article about me or this mm -hmm. search engine result about me, I don't want that showing up anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and we know it's just particularly useful for people who've been cyber stalked or revenge porned or whatever, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, it goes way beyond that. But this is why you're seeing on a lot of websites, will you accept cookies? Because if that would okay. function in the European Union, they have to acknowledge that they're tracking you and exactly yeah. how they're tracking you. And yeah, a lot of people don't realize how bad those cookies are sometimes, especially some of the evil ones. Oh, and how persistent they are. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, sometimes just for, for just for giggle, just go into your into your your cookie file. I mean, it's, it's there on your computer. You can typically yeah. and and look, you'll be astonished. Yeah. At, all the cookies that are in there and who and who they represent yeah i know i use a, a program called spybot every now and then and they'll go clean all the cookies and take out like really evil ones i guess they target and it's amazing how much of them will be sucking out your memory in your computer and slowing it down yeah i need a right to forgotten law but a right to be forgotten by your ex's law where your exes can't stalk <laughs> you anymore i need that so <laughs> but all these things quit made me quit being a mob boss i finally gave up the uh, costa nostra several years ago uh, no five months ago hits. huh no longer doing contract hits no longer doing contract hits after we had peter struck on the show and frank Faguzzi, they said you got to knock it off chris with the um <laughs> Cosa Nostra thing. And I was like, okay, I'll, but I don't want to get wrapped up in anything I haven't done already. But as long as they don't dig in the backyard, we're cool. Uh, <laughs> wait, are we live? Uh, what are some other aspects of the book? I mean, is there anything that people can do to protect themselves more or is it just... You can, well, there's a couple things. Uh, number one, if you don't want your internet service provider to record everything you're doing, mm -hmm. then you can use a virtual private network. Uh, mm -hmm you know, a VPN, just be really careful. Some of the cheap VPNs or the free VPNs or buy our product. Can you get this VPN? Those VPNs also record everything you're doing <laughs> <laughs> so, and sell it. 
So there are a couple of companies out there that just say right up front, we do not even have the ability to record what's passing through us. We are simply a, a portal into the internet. And those are the VPNs you want. And, and they're going to cost you money. They're going to typically are five, six bucks a month. But, you know, it's, you're going to have to actually pay for it. We've reviewed um, a few good ones on the show. Yeah. Step, yeah. step one. The other thing is be careful where you plug your phone in. Absolutely amazing. The, you, if you plug your phone into somebody's car, most cars will automatically suck down your data. Right. All your contacts. And, yeah. for, you know, for, the, for the phone system and for the addresses and everything else. And I mean, this one Uber driver that who's in my book, he discovered kind of accidentally that his car had the complete contact list for 70 different people who had driven in his car, who had just plugged in off his car. Yeah. And so it's like, be really careful where you're plugging your phone in and make sure that it's just a power block. If somebody says, here, you want some free electricity, free recharge, be very careful. Yeah, it's amazing how our phones are just like these things. What about using the that one site? What is it? The Onion? I forget what it's called. It's a Onion. website. Yeah, where Duck you can search is, and stuff. Is, yeah, it's a, it's a search engine that does not record your searches or mm -hmm. doesn't you know personalize them, unlike uh, Google. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I've used DuckDuckGo for years. In fact, when it first started out, we had the founder of it on our show, and that that got me all excited about it. Mm -hmm. I think they do a great job. And are they part of the Tor browser network? That's what I was thinking. I was thinking the Onion. That's oh, you were thinking of Tor. That's the, yeah. That'll get you into the dark web. Yeah, and, and also anonymize what you're doing by bouncing it off from multiple servers around the world. No, uh, Tor is probably way beyond the capability of most people, and and the average person probably wouldn't even want to try it. Because once you get in the dark web, it can be a scary place. I mean, you got drug dealers and pimps and predators there. Yeah. Note to self, go back to mob ties on Tor Network. <laughs> anyway, go. there you go. So uh, there's one other thing I wanted to ask you about on privacy, and it kind of had to do with Tor. The FBI was doing something where they bought something off. What was that Israeli, Israeli scuff up over some software? It turns out the FBI ended up buying some of it and sampling it. Did it have to do with privacy? I think or that those were basically hacker. tools that are used to hack into your computer. They were yeah. hacking tools, you know. I remember when the FBI was uh, had figured out how to dial into everyone's webcam. And I'm like, if the FBI wants to watch me running around naked around my house in the mornings or after a shower, I feel sorry for that FBI agent. So Yeah, but you should also feel outraged that it's even possible. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I think Edward Sonnen talked a little bit about that and everything because they were having some fun with being able yeah. to... Another guy that. before Mark Zuckerberg who puts a Band-Aid over the camera on his laptop. Yeah, well, remember, I remember that controversy. I was like, Oh my God, he knows. So they go, I leave mine on all times. If anyone wants to see me naked, God bless them because their eyes are going to burn out of their freaking head. So, you know, that are they, that are they going to lose all that Taco Bell they, the night before. What else do you want to touch on your book that we need to know about? Well, I think that, they, you know, one of the really interesting things that I learned when I was writing the book is that you will hear people say privacy is not in the Constitution. Yeah, and right. it, the word literally is not in the Constitution. Why is that? Well, it, it, because the word privacy had a completely different meaning in the 1700s than it does today. Back in the 1700s, most people, nobody had a bathroom. The, the bathtub was always next to the stove in the kitchen because that's where you heated the... No, and most people didn't have a toilet because the, Thomas Crapper had not... He didn't popularize the flush toilet until the 1860s. They had outhouses. And the outhouses were sometimes referred to as privies. Well, why were they called privies? Because when you wanted to go to the toilet, you'd say, excuse me, I need a moment of privacy. And that was the meaning of the word back then was toilet functions. And so one of the framers of the constitution thought, yeah, we really don't want to write toilet functions into the constitution. So instead they say you have the right to secure it, to security in your home papers and effects in the Fourth Amendment, that you have the right not to have your home invaded by soldiers in the Third Amendment. You have the right to, to speak or not to speak, to keep your thoughts secret in the First You have the right not to incriminate yourself, not to speak about what you've been doing in the Fifth Amendment. These are all dimensions of the right to privacy, but they were never recognized under American law until 1965. Wow. In 1961, this was the year that the birth control pill was legalized by the FDA. And but it was still illegal in many states across the country for even married couples to have any kind of birth control in their home. It was a crime. Really? Oh, yeah. There, there some, you got some really aggressive Catholics out there who got, got a lot of these laws passed. Wow. The famous one was in Connecticut because that was the one that got litigated twice before the Supreme Court. And in 61, when that was litigated, 
The Supreme Court said basically, there is no right to privacy in the Constitution. Sorry, you can't have a condom if the state of Connecticut says you can't have a condom or a birth control pill or whatever. Wow. Yeah. And so then in 65, a married couple sued. And this is called, the case was called Griswold v. Connecticut. And the Supreme Court discovered privacy in the Constitution. And <laughs> married couples can have a condom in their home without being afraid that the police are going to kick in their door and drag them off. Because that's what was happening. I mean, that, wow. that to this couple. And it was in the course of another kind of investigation, but they would add these charges on illegal possession of condoms. And so in 65, they legalized a possession of birth control pills based on privacy for married couples. But it wasn't until 1972 that the Supreme Court legalized the possession of birth control for unmarried people. And that what? kicked off the women's revolution and mm. you know, of the 70s the women's rights movement, and, and that also led directly to the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision that said that not only do you have the privacy to use birth control, but you also have the privacy to control your own pregnancy, at least until the point where this is actually a viable baby, at which point it becomes society power, as it were. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even know that that was that recent. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah it really is. <laughs> so is it possible for, I don't know if you're talking about this in the book, but is it possible to get our politicians who are always owned by all these different uh, companies, is it possible? I mean, they benefit from the cookies because when they want to do their advertising for re for their campaigns to get reelected, they benefit from that. Like I remember back in the day, we owned a huge telemarketing company and they did the whole DNC ban telemarketing sort of thing, but they made an exclusion where politicians could still call. And I was like, are you kidding me? Right. And so... <laughs> Politicians, an exclusion for the politicians. Yeah. And so they, so they, and so the politicians benefit from it's like trying to get them to run Facebook and everything else. They benefit from running those re election ads and cookies and knowing what you, okay, are you right leaning or left leaning and who do you vote for and what groups are you in? They benefit from all that. Is there any way to get these jokers to, to actually enforce some sort of privacy law because that's kind of like the stock thing these days. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think in your question, you identified the, the real issue here, which is that the cancer in our society is money and politics. Yeah. And we're the only developed democracy in the world that allows politicians to be owned by billionaires or big corporations. Mm -hmm. Money is limited in every other country. And the only reason that it's not limited here is because in three Supreme Court decisions, 1976, Buckley versus Vallejo, the Supreme Court ruled that if a wealthy person owns a politician and that politician consistently votes in the interest of the wealthy person and the wealthy person is the principal patron of the politician, that's no longer called bribery or corruption, that's now called free speech. Two years later, in a decision written by Lewis Powell, uh, First National Bank of Boston versus Balad, he ruled that that applies to corporations as well. And then the Supreme Court tripled down on that in 2010 with Citizens United. So we now have a, a political system where, you know, unless your politician is a member of the Progressive Caucus, where they've sworn not to take that kind of money, you have wholly owned politicians. They're, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, the most recent example of this was Kirsten Sinema voting against the piece of legislation that would have allowed Medicare to negotiate drug prices after piles of money from Big Pharma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both her and... Uh mansion uh, yeah. just so much money from the oh, gop no. the, 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 she was the epipen person it's so insane they should they, they need to publicize this more somehow i don't know yeah. people don't read or pay attention they're busy i don't know watching the bachelor or something oh, i just lost the bachelor crowd all two of them yeah i think i remember you talking this about the supreme court decisions when you came on for the uh, hidden history of american oligarchy or other books so people should grab that as well yeah. Now, that's a real eye opener. In fact, I've shared a lot of people in the beginning read this book and understand how those SCOTUS decisions. And a lot of people don't realize even like why groups like the Bessie DeVos Center for National Policy have been trying to stack the Supreme Court for years. And we're probably up for another fight with the new person that wants to get on there. I forget her name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kat Katanji Brown Depp. I think. Yeah. They're already lining up to cause problems with that. So. And they kind of have to because of the way their base is. Yeah, they call the leftist radical. Yeah, yeah. Anything more you want to touch on in your book before we go out? I think you'll find a lot of fascinating stories in it. You'll learn a lot about you know what's known about you that you didn't know. And there are steps in the end of the book, action steps you can take both to protect yourself and to try to clean up our politics around this stuff. So yeah. that's, that's why I wrote it and that's what it's got in it. 
We all need to pay better attention and do more stuff. Well, it's been great to have you again on the show, Tom. Good to see you. Thank you, Chris. Back at you. It's becoming just a regular visit for you. So uh, <laughs> how many books do you have out now so far? You got a ton of books. I don't know. It's in the 30s. <laughs> um, so the, there the you last go. One in the series, I think it's going to be the last one in the series, The Hidden History of Neoliberalism, How Reaganism Gutted America will be out in September. So I'll see you again. Then. I will want to see that. We've had a lot of great authors on the show that have talked about Ronald Reagan and those years and everything, even the rise of, um, who was my favorite book? It was the biography of, who was our Goebbels that was in the White House over immigration? He looks like Joseph Goebbels. Uh, why can't I, Edward? What's, what's the name I'm missing? Anyway, anyway, it'll be an interesting read to hear about it. Anyway, thank you very much for coming on the show. Give us your plugs, your .com, so people can find you on the interwebs, please. Yeah, Hartman, HartmanReport.com is probably the best place to introduce yourself to my thoughts. And, and uh, TomHartman.com, if you want to know where to find the web or the show or the books or something yeah. like that. However you spell it, we'll get you there. Subscribe to the newsletter, too, man. That whole that thing I get every day, oh, my God gosh it's like a wormhole you go down and it's like three hours later you're just like wow i learned thanks for being on the show tom ordered up the books guys wherever fine books are sold remember don't go in those alleyways because you might get shivved the book is called the hidden history of big brother in america how the death of privacy and the rise of surveillance threatens us and our democracy learn educate yourself and all that good stuff go to youtube.com forward slash chris foss hit the bell notification button goodreads.com forward slash chris foss everywhere where the chris foss show is thanks for tuning in be good to each other stay safe and we'll see you guys next time